is question number five from your Chem A11 2011 exam. And right away, a quick glance at the Ka of hypochlorous acid, which is 2.9 times 10 to the power of negative 8, should be sufficient for you to know that hypochlorous acid is a weak acid. The acid dissociation constant is a useful tool for guessing how well an acid dissociates. Thus, if we have 0 0.265 molars of hypochlorous acid with a Ka of 2.9 times 10 to the power of negative 8, the amount of hydronium produced must be very tiny. Unfortunately, all of the answers meet this criterion. So we have no alternative but to exercise our rational faculties. So let's begin by writing out the reaction as follows. And then construct an ice table as follows, ignoring the concentration of liquid water. And so we're told that the initial concentration of hypochlorous acid is 0 0.265 molars and we're not sure how things will change to equilibrate so we just put that as X an unknown and because all of these species are in a one-to-one -one ratio if X amount of reactant is consumed then on the product side we get X amount of products being produced and so we end up with 0 0.265 minus x, x, and x. Now we're told that the Ka is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the power of negative 8. And loosely speaking, this is equal to the concentrations of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants and more specifically the expression we get is as follows and so it follows that the acid dissociation constant is therefore equal to the following expression and this is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the power of negative 8 and so at this point it helps to round off our denominator to 0 0.265 but bear in mind that this estimation will only work if the concentration of X is significantly less than 0 0.265. And what lends credence to this supposition is that the value of our acid dissociation constant is rather tiny. And because the acid dissociation constant is so low, it amounts to saying that the reaction does not proceed very far. Which in turn amounts to saying that only a fraction of our reactants are consumed to produce our products. Thus, the concentration of our reactants will not diminish very much. And so returning to our expression for the acid dissociation constant, this denominator can then be rounded off to 0 0.265. And all that's left at this point is to calculate for x. And so x squared is equal to 0 0.265 times our Ka, which is 2.9 times 10 to the power of negative 8 and so it follows that x is going to be the square root of this entire value. And this value turns out to be 7.7 .7 times 10 to the power of negative 9 and the square root of this value turns out to be 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Now x is a concentration and as such the units will be molars. And so this is a molarity and this corresponds to B. 
This is question number six from your 2011 Chem A11 exam. Before we answer this question, it helps to explore the nature of bonds and bond strengths using commonplace macroscopic examples. If you ever tried snapping a pencil or a piece of chalk in half, you probably found that the longer the pencil or chalk stick was, the easier it was to crack. Conversely, you would probably agree that the shorter the length of your pencil or chalk stick, the harder it became to snap. In a sense, a similar dynamic is at play on a more microscopic level when we take a look at the length and thereafter the corresponding strengths of the following bonds, all of which happen to be between hydrogen and a halogen. I'm going to go ahead and draw out the halogens in the order they appear on group 7 of your periodic table. And what I'm hoping to underscore in this schematic is the difference between the size of the atoms. And clearly, the atomic radius is increasing as we go down the periodic table. So now let's go ahead and add our acidic hydrogen. And notice, drawing the bond from the center of the atom to our hydrogen. Because doing so makes it quite clear in which direction bond length is increasing. So going back to our analogy of pencils and reprising what we concluded, the shorter the bond length, the harder this bond is, the shorter the bond length, the harder it is to break this bond. Well, the strength of acid, the shorter the bond, the harder it becomes to break this bond. Well, the strength of an acid boils down to how well an acid dissociates. That is to say, how easily our acidic hydrogen can come off. And if we follow the logic to its full fruit, the shorter the length of this bond, the harder it becomes to break. Well, the strength of an acid boils down to how well an acid dissociates, which is to say, how easily our acidic hydrogen come off. And if we follow the logic to its full conclusion, we come to the conclusion that the acid with the shortest bond, and that would be hydrofluoric acid, is the weakest acid. And so B is the correct answer. This is question number seven from your Chem A11 2011 midterm. And in this question, we are looking for an option which amounts to a pOH of 3.14. Well, at its simplest level, the pOH is a measure of the alkalinity of a substance and can be expressed as equal to the negative log of a solution's hydroxide concentrate. That is to say, if the pOH is 3.14, then solving for our hydroxide concentration, we get the following expression, where the hydroxide concentration is equal to 10 to the power of negative 3.14, which gives us 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4, which corresponds to option C. This is question number 8 from your Chem A11 2011 exam. And in this question, we have four salts, which, when added to water, will ionize into a cation and an anion. Taking a look at option A, we have NH4 plus 
as our cation and chloride as our anion. Now chloride is a spectator ion and as such will not affect the acidity of our solution. However, ammonium is a weak acid. And so clearly, if we have a solution in which the only active species is an acid, then it seems fairly consistent with reason to conclude that option A will yield an acidic solution. And if you take a moment to explore options B, C, or D, using the same logic, it ought to become clear why none of these substances would yield an acidic solution if added to water. This is question 14 from your Chem A11 2011 exam. And this is a very simple question and as such should only take a minute to solve. Essentially they tell you that you have a weak acid and that to an aqueous solution of this weak acid we are adding NaOH which is a strong base. If you glance at the answers provided all of them make mention of the term equivalence point. So let's just take a moment to define this term. The equivalence point is simply the point at which the amount of base you've added is equal to the amount of acid you began with. Well, if we have an equal amount of acid and base and our base is stronger, which is to say more reactive than our acid, it follows that the pH of our solution at this moment in time is quite clearly greater than 7. And so the correct answer is A.